Hello, everybody, and welcome to your Poseidon a mid lane guide. We're going to be starting off with a nice conduit gem, going into our Spear of Desolation with a couple of health pots and a mana pot, our bead, of course, and we're going to be starting our one. So, Boomba's Hammer is getting nerfed pretty dang hard. Um, they're giving slight buffs to the later version of things like the Sands of Time starters and the Conduit starters. So as a mage, you once again get to start into uh, your mage starters. You're going to have some good options later on. And with the Boomba's Hammer nerfs upcoming, uh, it's just not worth it to do those Boomba's uh, changes anymore. Gotta try to get my hunter over here to the red buff with me. There we go. We're gonna be starting off with our one on Poseidon. One of the biggest mistakes that I see people on Poseidon right off the bat is they start off with their Whirlpool. Uh, your Whirlpool is actually not as good of clear as your one is. Your one has a lower cooldown and it starts to knock back the minions, which stops them from auto attacking. And overall, it's just a better clearing ability. Now we're not gonna max it out first, but we are gonna get it here at level one. And then at level two, we will get our whirlpool. Now I need to watch their levels just to make sure I'm not going to get early gank. If you see the jungler get a very, very early level two, that means that you are going to get um, early gank in the mid lane. So pay attention to the enemy jungler's level. They get it right off the bat. That's how you know that they soloed the speed and they're coming right for your butt in mid. On Poseidon, we're basically the wombo combo damage mid laner. So we're gonna be going into a big bursty build, looking to get some slapper damper damage. And we're gonna combine really well with gods that have a lot of setup. So we're looking to pair ourselves um, with high CC characters typically. Gonna get my two here at level three. This is basically your getaway skill on Poseidon because it gives you some bonus movement speed. So we like to set ourselves up um, with some nice characters that give us some CC. So on our team right here, King Arthur is actually a really good combination with Poseidon. King Arthur's um, ultimates, honestly, both versions of them are really good setup for Poseidon. Uh, on your Kraken. Just makes your life that much easier. Uh, Sobek is a really good combination because they just get yeeted right back to you. He plucks them. You know exactly where they're going to land. So you get to just go ahead and Whirlpool Kraken them. Other notable gods like Kuma, Karna, and Neja that just give you that big, really, really obvious setup in front of your character. So for our level order on Poseidon, we grabbed that one at level one. But it's actually going to be one of the last abilities that we rank up. Our level order is going to be four, three. And then you get to choose your preference between at the end, two, one or one, two. I tend most of the time to go four, three, two, one. Um, I like to have the lower cooldown on my two and it also increases the movement speed. I so I to tend base. to rank it up um, after Whirlpool in order to have that bonus movement speed, just to have a little bit of extra getaway potential. Uh, but You're I also right tend to have five people kind of running at my face. So maybe if you have less people running at your face, you can go for the one for a little bit uh, more burst damage off of your combo. But for me, I like to level Poseidon four, three, two, one. For our clearing the wave, we're typically just going to be able to clear it full with a nice little 3-1 combo. Later on in the game, we're actually going to be able to stop using uh, our 1 completely on the wave because our Whirlpool will just go ahead and take care of it. So one of the big benefits of Poseidon right now in the meta is how fast he can farm. You see a camp you want to kill, you throw down a little Whirlpool, you throw down a little 1, maybe an auto attack or 2 and you get the camp and you move on. And because of your passive and because of your two, you got a lot of bonus movement speed. 
So you can be running around and get into your waves to back to the jungle, to back into the wave, to back to the jungle. So Scylla right here does have B Desert active, but if I can get a Kraken on him, he is going to be dead. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my Whirlpool really quick. See if I can get a little bit closer to him. Gonna throw down the Whirlpool right on top of him, which is gonna make it so he can't dash away unless he beads. Trying to bead and dash at the same time as might is really hard, especially if you've got anywhere near like the 90 to 100 ping that I do. So unless he basically preemptively beats, the second he sees that comes out, that's gonna get the kill every single time. Which brings us, of course, into our standard combination on Poseidon. You basically just witnessed it. You're pretty much regularly gonna just do a three and an ultimate. And if that's on a squishy character, that's gonna mean you have to kill him. You use your Whirlpool first, because that is gonna cripple the target, so they can't use a getaway skill unless they have some sort of CC immunity, usually being in the form of a bead. If they are going to live through the combo, then you're typically gonna do the three, four, and then you're gonna throw down your one. By the time they come back down from the um, crack and knock up, then they'll get hit immediately by your one, take a little bit more damage, and get knock up again. Standardly, not gonna use your two in that combo. You're gonna save that um, for a little bit of additional damage on a side target, or to use as a getaway slash catch up ability because of the movement speed. So at this point, I've got four points in my whirlpool. So I can basically just use Whirlpool by itself uh, in order to clear these waves. No longer have to waste the additional mana by using our Tidal Surge as well. So something very, very important on Poseidon that you need to keep in mind. Your right tower is under attack. That is truly unfortunate. This bar down here, your passive bar, is really important. On a lot of characters, your passive bar is like a little bit important, you know, like he maybe want to kind of pay attention to it. On Poseidon, it is ridiculously important. Now I'm going to try to get over here uh, to this dual lane, try to see if I can't help out. I'm going to go for this Trinobog as he's trying to run over here back to lane. So I'm going to go ahead and crack in it, but he is going to do so much damage. That is actually a beefy dual lane. That's a level eight Trinobog and a level uh, seven Terra, they are farming extremely well over there, so he's gonna blow me right on up with that Terra ult. Ow, Terra ult, no thank you. So this passive on Poseidon, you actually get a bunch of additional damage when you have this Tide stacked up. So you're gonna get this through auto attacks, and you stack it real, real, real quick with your two procs. So your two gives you those three autos, normally just going ahead and using it will give you a little bit of tide, but when you have your two proc, you're gonna build it up a ton. And then when you use abilities, your abilities are going to use the tide. So your two is gonna help you build your tide, and your one, your three, and your four are going to use it. What that tide is gonna do, is it's gonna give you a bunch of awesome stats, it's gonna give you movement speed, it's gonna give you damage, a ton of stuff. So you wanna make sure that that tide is pretty much always stacked all the way up so that way your combo has all of that bonus damage on top of it so make sure you're auto attacking constantly to build up your tide and if you're um not able to get it built up very efficiently just like that then make sure you use your two in order to get those bonus autos in order to get your tide going so there's a fight breaking out and left. I do want to be over there to help, but I also need to make sure I am getting credit for this wave. So I'm going to come over here and get credit for the wave, and I'm going to go put out some deep wards. And then I'm actually going to wait for the Scylla to kind of come back. I'm going to be a little bit more patient, put myself a little bit farther back to see if I can find them coming in. They don't seem to be coming in very hard. There's the Scylla around the wall. Pele's here as well. I'm going to go for a little cripple cracking over the wall. Still is gonna be very low, but it's not quite gonna be enough. And I'm gonna get body blocked so hard by the minions once again. That's like the fifth time today 
that I have been body blocked by minions to my death. It is just the minions are not happy with me today. So we're going to be able to finish up our Spear of Desolation right here. And we've also got our Shoes of the Magi for the early power and the early pet. For our third item, I'm going to go right into the Rod of Tahuti. So that way, if there is a squishy that is below that 50% health marker for the Rod of Tahuti, the Kraken is always going to finish off the kill. Very similar to how you would buy the Rod of Tahuti on Scylla, so you always get the reset on your own. For gods that we like to go against on Poseidon, we like to go against gods that have a lot of uh, movement based abilities in their kit that's not bonus movement speed. So, somebody like Asilla is an okay matchup for us on Poseidon because she does have a dash. But she also has a CC immune ultimate that gives her a whole lot of movement speed. And the reason why we like to go against gods like, say, a Shurket, who's got multiple movement based abilities, um, and not somebody that has a CC immune ulti or movement speed buffs, is because of our Whirlpool. Our Whirlpool is extremely effective against guys that need to use leaps because they get crippled inside of it and then they're just stuck. Now, if you are a Kukulkan and you have Slither, all you have to do when you see the Whirlpool is go ahead and press your Slither. You get the slow immunity and then you get the movement speed buff and you walk right away. So somebody like a Mercury or a Kukulkan actually tend to be pretty annoying because they have that slow immunity plus they get nice movement speed okay. buffs. So they kind of way. just walk out of your stuff, which makes them really hard to hit with your combo. The classic three, four crack and combo. It's a lot harder against guys that have a bunch of movement speed. So on this team, Pele is gonna be really hard for us. Pele has a CC immune ulti that'll go right through our three. Plus her own three is gonna give her all that bonus movement speed. And chances are she's gonna be able to walk right on out of our crack and combo even if we put him right in the middle Terra, on the other hand is going to get absolutely wrecked by my cripple she's not going to be able to use her dash in that at all now luckily for her she does have knock up immunity so she doesn't get knocked up by the Kraken right there, and she has her shell up, which allows her to live. Pele, on the other hand, you can see, was just kind of W keying right at us. And she's a lot harder for me to deal with. Being able to stop the Terra 1 with your cripple on the uh, Whirlpool is extremely effective as well. So sometimes you can put your Whirlpool in between people and where you think they're going to dash, and it will proc on them right and back. stop their dash right in the middle of it. So if I see, like, a Terra Stone, and I know she's going to go dash to it, I can actually throw down my Whirlpool, like, in between Terra and her stone, and if she tries to go dash it, she will lose uh, that dash. It'll put it right onto cooldown for her. Make sure I build up my passive as much as I can. And continually farming, making sure we're buying those sentry wards. Pretty much on every single back. Your right tower is under attack. So right now, this stage of the game, level 13. This is where your one-shot potential is like really online. So I'm looking for anybody that's going to be one-shotable. So right now, Paley's not really paying attention. So while she would normally be a harder target, because she's so focused on the Sobek, I'm actually going to be able to walk right up and hit him with the combo. If Arthur has his ulti up, that Terra is dead no matter what. And just like that, little Arthur ult, little Medusa ult, that's going to be a dead Terra as well. So normally, whereas Pele is going to have an easier time getting out of the ulti, she was so preoccupied onto uh, the Sobek that I could just come around the corner and hit her with the big wombo combo before he actually had time to react. Your 
Another thing you have to be wary of on the Poseidon is characters that have a lot of immunities. So you are, in fact, a very burst-based god. A lot of your damage is going to come in the form of your Kraken. Probably like half of your kid's damage is just your ultimate. Which means any gods that have low cooldown immunity frames are going to be problematic. Robin, very annoying for you to fight. Changa, very annoying. Aphrodite, because she basically her ultimate can counter your ultimate on cooldown for two people. Those kinds of characters are going to be very annoying for you because you're basically never going to get the value out of your ultimate onto them. And that's where a lot of Poseidon's value is going to come from. On the other hand, another little uh, tip and trick here for Poseidon is some characters like Ra or Ancilla in this case can be really hard for you to hit with your ultimate, right? They've got bonus movement speed. Scylla in the form of her ultimate. She becomes CC immune. She starts running around real fast. Ra just passively runs around real fast. But both of them have to stand still when they cast their ulti. So it can sometimes be beneficial to actually go ahead and wait to use your ulti on them until they try to use theirs. So that way, you don't have to worry about trying to hit them when they're super fast. You wait for Scylla to cast her ulti, boom, just like that. And while she's in that animation, you can just go ahead and smash him. Raw, when you start to hear that giant caca of him casting his ultimate, you just go ahead and cast your ulti right on top of him then. And because he'll be uh, locked into an animation, he won't be able to get out of your ult. So that's a great way to try to hit people that are maybe a little bit tougher. If they have any sort of ability where they have to stand still. Obviously, somebody like an Anubis, very straightforward. Both his one and his ultimate, he stands still for. Great time to go ahead and use the Kraken on him. Minimize the amount of chances that you can miss the ultimate by utilizing other characters having to stand still. So right now, we've got a lot of damage in this build. We're going to be taking this Conduit Gem into a Archmage's Gem. Uh, for missing. that bonus damage, Archmage's Gem uh, and Gem of Focus, both going to be receiving buffs very soon. They are both going to be very high tier uh, mage Here items, depending on the situation. Gem of Focus is a lot more for uh, lower cooldown spam gods. Works really well on gods like Hebo and Changa, uh, Tiamat, because she's got so many abilities. Archmage's Gem, more so down the line for like the big damagers of the world, like Poseidons and Scyllas. So you get that value off of that Careful bonus little. power. Now, two more things to keep in mind, kind of related to the Archmage's gem, uh, actually. I'm gonna go uh, right now into, I'm gonna get, they're a pretty tanky team. They got the Terra, they got the Cerberus. Pele is actually not going that tanky. So that's kind of a blessing right there. Um, so I was going to go into an Obsidian Shard, but I think I'm actually going to go into a Staff of Mirrodin instead right now. I'd rather have a little bit more CDR because uh, they're not quite as tanky as I thought they were going to be. If they were going to be building that more typical and she like shifter shield uh, style build that you see, I was going to go into the Ob Shard just to have more percent pen. Your right tower so while standardly, uh, Poseidon, you're gonna use your Whirlpool and then your Kraken. It is not always proper to do it in that order. Sometimes it's actually better to Kraken and then Whirlpool. If somebody is gonna be able to get away, like if the Whirlpool is gonna give them enough time to realize kind of what's happening, and it's gonna give them an indicator to get away, then sometimes just a raw Kraken every once in a while can really throw people for a loop. So I'm just gonna crack it right over this wall. Unfortunately, Chernabog is actually gonna be hiding from the Sobek, coincidentally. But sometimes you can catch people really off guard by just going for the raw Kraken without the Whirlpool. 
Because it's just the standard combination that you always see, right? It's always three, then four, and three, then four, and three, then four. So sometimes you want to mix it up and do the four and then the three because people will be waiting and listening for the audio cue, right? Because the whirlpool goes out, you hear the audio cue, and that means they know the Kraken is coming. So make sure you mix it up just every once in a while to keep your enemy on their toes. And the, the reason why this is relevant and connected um, with the Archmage's Gem is because of how the Archmage's Gem is going to proc. So Archmage's Gem is going to give you that bonus scaling, right? On your next ability. But if you three and then four, you're going to get this bonus uh, magical power onto your Whirlpool instead of your Kraken. Now, it's not the end of the world. Um, we've all been stuck in a Whirlpool and seen how much damage it can do, right? So it's not the end of the world, but if you can get that bonus damage on the Kraken instead, well, that would just be fan of flipping tap. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Kraken right here to go ahead and secure the Fire Giant. Now, for our objective secure, in a perfect world on Poseidon for the best potential secure. Right there, that was just a raw Kraken. You can actually do it better than that as long as you have your cooldowns up. I didn't. How you want to secure an objective on uh, Poseidon perfectly is you have the Whirlpool already on the floor, right? Proking. As long as the Whirlpool is on the floor, you're going to get a little damage from that. Then you throw out the Kraken, and right when your Kraken goes off, you spam your one, so that way you can have your Kraken, your Whirlpool, and your one basically all hitting at the exact same time. So do go ahead and try to utilize the Kraken and the one together, kind of like the way that on an E set, you would use her ultimate plus the Spirit Ball in order to secure. Same concept right there. So we're going to grab this Primal Fury, and then we should be able to go ahead and back it up. And get both of our items. Poseidon also, in general, is a very, very good objective burner. Four damaging abilities. But you're two at the end of the game. Right about this portion of the game on Poseidon is when his trident starts to hit really hard once you have this all the way leveled up and you're getting the bonus from your passive as well um, in left lane. your trident is going to start to swing especially if you get all those three hits onto the same people so right here i do want to come around the back i see a still here i'm going for the whirlpool ultimate combo gonna take out the Scylla. there's gonna be a cerberus here we should be able to take him out as well go ahead and pop my two over to the side i have to agus the pele right now i'm not gonna chase this out i'm just gonna go ahead and grab the phoenix we've got two of them dead we actually might be able to go for the end here gonna try to throw down my whirlpool on the terra over the wall so she can dash got to be careful of the titan though trinobog actually dashed into the back line so he needs to be very careful. I'm gonna throw down a Whirlpool near his feet. So that way if he comes down exactly right here, he will be crippled. He does come down, but he has his beat and his egg is up. If we're gonna be in the Titan room, we really need to be focusing the Titan right now. We're putting a lot of effort into um, their gods, but not a lot of effort into the Titan. It's like when that Trinobog was in the air, that was a solid like five seconds that we could have just been beating on the Titan. We're getting a little bit greedy staying this long. They are getting respawned. I'm without a sentry ward. I'm gonna stick right here around the wall, do a little whirlpool ultimate combo over the wall for the Scylla. Now I'm looking for the Trinobar. Trinobar goes down, try to zone out the Terra here from being able to get away. And now we can actually, uh, actually no, we need to retreat. We need to get out of here. The Pele is respawned. They've got the Cerberus up. We need to skadoodle away. I'm gonna use my two for the bonus movement speed. See if I can't throw down a little whirlpool to uh, try to get that Pele off of our Medusa there a little bit. Now, if I was Pele, you can still be chasing, honestly. They've got creeps on the Titan, and there is the Pele. She is, in fact, still chasing. I thought she might be. But luckily, me and Medusa were sticking together, so it's going to be okay. So on Poseidon, I'm utilizing these walls 
because a big part of Poseidon is the element of surprise. When you're looking directly at Poseidon, it can actually be pretty hard to hit the Kraken combo. Because there are a lot of things in the game that simply counter it. From actives with your Aegis and your beads being able to walk out, to Pelades being able to zoom zoom, to CC immune ults, to immunities on gods, to bonus protections, all sorts of things. So really, if you can do it from around a wall, right? Your one goes through walls, your three goes through walls, you can ult the over wall. If you can just kind of sit around a corner and hit them with that whirlpool combo, the element of surprise is really, really important on Poseidon. And it should be noted that your one does go through walls. A lot of people don't remember, don't know that, but your one will go all the way through a wall. I think a lot of people realize that the three and the four go through walls, but a lot, a lot of people recognize uh, that that one will be able to go through a wall. I think typically line-based abilities, it's harder for people to recognize when they go through walls. There's really not a whole lot of rhyme or reason in Smite to what abilities go through walls or not. So I'm actually gonna call for the Titan right here. It looks like Pele is gonna come over to me. They actually have that ward. That was a really good ward. So Scylla is standing still right there. Pele is gonna come around. So they had that bottom right jungle warded. And so they're gonna commit a lot to me right there. They need to be a little bit careful with the Scylla behind them. But as long as they focus the Titan right here, because it was already so low from earlier, it is gonna go ahead and go down. Medusa getting a couple of flex kills here at the end of the game. So for our last item here, we actually have quite a few items on the horizon. We have something uh, like an ob shard if we do want to cap out our percent penetration. We of course have divine ruins that if we needed to get anti-healing, we would have had to pick up earlier. We have Soul Gem, which is always a common addition to build, just to add in a little bit more CDR, and you get that extra burst damage, which can be quite nice on Poseidon for the Kraken combo. And of course, Spear of the Magus is getting that buff upcoming to give it 12% lifesteal, and you're gonna see a lot of Spear of Magus popping up in build as well. So keep your eyes on all of those items uh, to finish up the build, guys. And that is our Poseidon, a mid lane guide. Thank you for supporting the Twitchiest community. If you'd like to see more videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel and always hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Thank you for all your support and have a twitching day, y'all.